My name is Darren Curtis, and this is The Daily Brief. The first story is that the Kremlin's intensifying its rhetoric of pushing for a hypothetical partition of Ukraine. What's happening here is the Kremlin is trying to seed this concept so that they can talk about it more and more. According to the Institute for the Study of War, the ISW assessed that Russian propagandists are reigniting narratives that portray Ukraine as an artificially constructed state. It's not real anyway. Uh, if you want to see the opposite argument, see this book, Ukraina uh, Redux. It's by Robert Magoski. Uh, somebody was kind enough to send me this. It's a very thin volume. Talks about the multiple times where Ukrainian na nationhood was started, even if it was only briefly at different periods in time. But it is its own place. Ukraine is not Russia. Uh, by reducing Ukraine's political legitimacy, Russia hopes to reduce Western military support and normalize discussions about ceding territory to Russia. Second story, I thought this was odd. Ukrainian special forces are in Sudan operating against Russian mercenaries. But why are they doing it? Well, Ukraine's been pursuing a strategy of conducting these special forces raids in multiple places. And inside Russia makes sense. But in Sudan, sure because there's going to be a propaganda victory to show that there's nowhere that's necessarily safe from its forces or attacking Russian forces. And it's a, a very small Wagner force that's in Sudan. Okay, Ukraine takes out a, about a third of warships of Russia's Black Sea fleet since the war began. So what does that mean? Military disabled, the Ukrainian military disabled 24 Russian ships and one submarine, that's 25, out of 74 warships that were in the Black Sea when the war began. Next story. Netherlands increases its number of F-16s for Ukraine. So they were going to send 18. They're going to send now 24 because they're modernizing and upgrading to the F-35 so they don't need them. But it'll take a while for them to get there. Once they get there, it'll have a significant effect. But in the meantime, they're going to have to wait it out. As conservatives balk, now going back to the immigration story from last night, as conservatives balk, U.S. Border Patrol Union endorses Senate immigration deal. Now, I'm going to get to that, but I want you to see this image here that was in the video of this NBC News story. Who, would, who do you believe would handle the border better? Trump, 57%. Biden, 22%. That's not asking Republicans. That's asking Americans writ large. So this is a good issue for Trump. And any deal that diffuses this now is going to take that away from Trump. And he knows it. And this deal doesn't do everything that it should. But the National Border Patrol Council, which represents more than 18,000 agents, said the bill would drop illegal border crossings nationwide wide and would allow our agents to get back to detecting and apprehending those who want to cross our border illegally and evade apprehension. Look, if the National Border Patrol Union endorses the deal, it's going to make it harder and harder for the Republicans to balk at that. Meanwhile, Trump hates this bill so much that he falsely is claiming that he didn't endorse Senator Lankford, who was the chief negotiator on the Senate side for the Republicans. Wow, how about that? That's the Daily Brief. Thank you for the likes, the subscribes, and the shares, and thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.